At this time, we have some additional special guests. We'll now hear from the sister of Dr. Rome, Miss Alicia Brown. Good morning, Lincoln University alumni and honored guests. I am Alicia Brown. I am the youngest sister of Dr. Rome. I am his favorite sister. <laughs> And I am truly excited to be here. I stand before you, but I won't be long. I was asked to say a few things about my big brother. As you know, Dr. Rome is really, truly, truly dedicated to America's future, as we all know, and we're so, we are so proud of him. I stand before you and I represent my siblings, um, Ivan Rome, uh, Philip Rome, and Felicia Rome. We're all his uh, siblings, and we're all excited and happy to be here. Okay, I am not the speaker. Kevin, he talked all of our lives, so I was the youngest, and I was kind of the one who just kind of stood back, and I was spoiled by everybody else. So I'm not the speaker, and I'm very nervous to be here, but I'm gonna say a few words about my brother. Um, let's see. I have, first of all, I have observed and I want to acknowledge that over the last few days, I have been so impressed with the love and the support and just all of the, the attentiveness that you guys have uh, showed towards my family and Dr. Rome. Um, Kevin has always been student driven and he's always been a mentor and advisor to students. In Kevin's mind, there are no limitations when it comes to students. Um, uh, not only to the students here on this campus and the other campuses that he served, but he's also uh, been motivated to provide opportunities for our family members and um, for their educations. And for him, he knows that there are no limitations when it comes to our family and for the uh, students here in, at, at Lincoln University. Um, I just want to say in closing that myself, my family, uh, Lincoln University, uh, Morehouse College, because I talked to a couple of your colleagues, I've spoken to a couple of your colleagues from North Carolina Central, and they all want you to know that we are so proud of you, we are so happy for you, and please remember, the best is truly yet to come. Thank you, Ms. Brown, for your kind remarks about your big brother. Now, this is a really special guest. You, you really don't see this very, very often, so I don't know what Dr. Rome did, but when I announce this gentleman, you'll know how special he is. He is the father-in-law of Dr. Rome, Mr. Roland C. Baker. <laughs> I've never had an introduction like that. <laughs> but. Uh, we go on. Uh, thanks for, all for allowing me to take part in this milestone series of events. The mission of the Special Learning Center is to provide comprehensive early intervention services to children with special needs so they may attain their maximum potential. You can find our website at www.speciallearningcenter.com for current activities, and we're also on Facebook under the Special Learning Center. We try to be a resource for people with disabilities in our community. If you have questions or a need, call us at 634-3070. My name is Clayton. I went to a special learning center. Will you be my superhero? Every United Way donation is super. I'm Will you be my superhero? Will you be my superhero? I'm Kobe. I go to special Jordan tool. Will you be my superhero? Support the United Way community campaign. My name is Dan. Will you be my superhero? Give, advocate, volunteer. My name is Colton, and I'm a member of the Boys and Girls Club. Will you be my superhero? That's what it means to live united.
coordinating uh, the achievement of personal objectives for students, faculty, administrative staff, and all of the university stakeholders, like the alumni and the general community of Jefferson City. What he'll do is show all of these stakeholders that their personal objectives can be achieved in conjunction with the university's even finer, greater, and objectives of the entire institution. Hopefully, the university will become even more renowned. This would be an ideal application of this principle of unity of objectives. He'll gather and he'll apply the resources to assist students in achieving their individual objectives and goals, preparing them for their life's work and for higher level of study. He'll inspire and he'll lead a group of faculty and administrators toward their objective to deliver the highest quality education so that graduates will leave here prepared to take advantage of their Lincoln experience. These faculty and administrators will personally earn a recognition, tenure, monetary compensation, and other things as they achieve their objective of delivery, state-of-the-art knowledge, and optimum operational efficiency. There will be demonstrated a core value, a commitment, that general objective to serve the community of Jefferson City, the state of Missouri, and to send its graduates on to greater society at high potential, with high potential personal contributions. This entire community, students, faculty, legislators, politicians, business persons, all of you providing individual effort, yes, while at the same time applying this principle in each element of the mix, seeing how achieving your individual objectives can generate success and achievement of the objectives as the community as a whole and the community of the entire world. We will go out into this, Dr. Helm said, and make our marks with a Lincoln label and a special Lincoln attitude and commitment that we'll see. So, knowing that these opportunities will be seized and the challenges will be met as we achieve and apply this principle of unity of objectives here at Lincoln and throughout its community. I wish my son-in-law, Kevin Rohn and his family, and Lincoln University and its entire community unparalleled success as we, as we face and you go on to a wonderful future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baker. At this time, we will hear from a dear friend, Dr. Tyrone Bledsoe. Well, at the church, I mean, uh, <laughs> I felt the amen moment right there. I'm probably the only person Dr. Rohn called two days ago and told me to keep these comments to two minutes. <laughs> he personally called me. He knows I grew up Baptist where it takes you 20 minutes to talk about what you're going to talk about, <laughs> Dr. Dickerson. But it gives me great pleasure to be here today as I am honored, humble, and as Les Brown would say, a plum pleasing pleasure to be standing before you, Lincoln University, to celebrate and inaugurate your 19th president. Thank you to the search committee, to the board of curators for approving their recommendation and the entire Lincoln University family for welcoming my good friend, Dr. Ron, with open arms. And thanks to everyone who put this program together, a tremendous program of events this week to celebrate this auspicious occasion. Dr. Rome is notable for his focus, everybody say focus, focus. on students, community outreach, and laser-like attention to embracing challenges and opportunities. I've known Dr. Rome most of his collegiate years and all of his professional years to this, uh, this month represents 26 years that I've been in his life. Give it up for 26 years. <laughs> so I respect him and his family, who's, fa who's like my own family, 
I feel blessed to call him a good friend, my best friend, and humbled to support him on this great day for him and the family. As I've studied Lincoln University, it is with a great, uh, it's a great institution with a culture that is ready and capable of becoming even better. And Dr. Rome is poised to be on all of those levels and certainly help you accomplish today what you've accomplished today and certainly take this university to another level. The place that many will point to to say it's an example of the way things should be done. With the landscape of higher education being constantly challenged and attacked on a daily basis, it is certainly a, a question in terms of its value uh, whether students need a higher education. But I know that the good news, Lincoln, is that you're positioned for great success in the future as you have a president in Dr. Rome who's committed to innovation and informed, everybody say informed, risk-taking. You have to be informed when you take risks. I wholeheartedly believe that the most successful colleges of the next decade will be defined by the clarity of missions. Dr. Rome leads the pack on the front of uh, being a visionary strategic leader and with the ability to facilitate clarity around mission. Lincoln, you are very fortunate and blessed to have a leader firmly committed to leading your university to the next level and to prepare your students to serve the world. So I love when Dr. Nams talked about the global perspective. Let me conclude by saying that the work we do as educators is important work, inspiring work. I've worked in higher education for nearly 30 years and have felt blessed every day, every moment. The impact of what we do is felt by many every single day. Thank you for providing this opportunity to support moving this university forward by sharing in this moment of your 19th president, Dr. Kevin D. Rump. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Bledsoe. Our university choir will now share with us the song entitled, All Good Things Will Be Added Unto You by Shelton Beckton. Ms. Michelle, Ms. Michelle Gamlin Green, conductor.
Everyone, please stand. Curator Hardwick, it is again my pleasure to present to you Dr. Kevin D. Rome, Sr., our 19th president of Lincoln University. say thank you, thank you, thank you. I could spend all of my time saying thank you, so I'll just say thank you and I won't call out anyone in particular. But I do want to say thank you to those who have come before me for what you've done on many levels. And thanks to those who selected me because if it had not been for your making that decision, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> and I want to say thank you so much to all of those who have supported me throughout my life, during my time uh, at Lincoln University, and somewhere in between. In my few minutes that I have, and they told me I only have a few minutes, so I'm going to heed that. I can follow instructions pretty well. So I'm only going to talk for a few minutes, but I'm going to focus on a few Fs. To make it clear, I'm going to focus on a few topics that begin with the letter F. Now, one may be thinking, why would Kevin focus on the letter F in an environment where the letter F signifies failure? And that's a good question to ask if you're thinking that. But what you don't know is that I know that God can take an F situation and create A plus results. You see, God can take an, a seemingly impossible situation and show us that all things and anything is possible to those who trust and believe. Therefore, I'm gonna take a few moments to speak on faith, family, friends, the future, fun, and then I'll be finished. <laughs> and I'll start out with faith. And from the words of Vanessa Bell Armstrong, one of my favorite gospel artists, she's a little old school for some people, but she's my favorite, she says, I have the faith to see the invisible, the invisible, expect the incredible, receive the impossible, faith that can conquer anything, faith 
that uproots my problems. Faith to know that God can solve it. Faith to vision my freedom. Faith that can conquer anything. Faith to reach the unreachable. Faith to fight the undefeatable. Faith to move the unmovable. Faith that stands the invincible. Faith that can conquer anything. Anything. <clears throat> anything. State budget shortfall, shortfalls, anything. The government shutting down, anything. Academically unprepared students, anything. Low morale, anything. Doubters and unbelievers, anything. You see, I have faith that can conquer anything. Sometimes you love them, and sometimes you wonder, God, are you sure this is where I was supposed to be born? But through all that, you know that you love them and you appreciate them. And I want to say to my family, uh, my mother, who did a great job as a single parent, I love you. My grandmother, who's been the bedrock of our family, I love you. And to my siblings and all of my relatives who are here today, I just want to say thank you because I didn't make it here by myself. And to my wife and kids, you see, you can't do the type of work that I've been called to do unless you have a great partner. Yeah. And I've been blessed to have one of the best, so thank you. And Kevin Jr., could you pay attention, please? <laughs> I know it's difficult, just I'm only going to be up here for a few minutes. <laughs> Friends, friendship. Friendship has been so important to me throughout my life. And I have many friends who are here today from various parts of my life. Friends who knew me when I was less presidential, I would say. <laughs> and friends who have known me when I've been a little bit more presidential and friends who will know me only as presidential, but through all of that, relationships are so important in life. Maintaining relationships are so important. And again, I say, I didn't make it here alone. So I have so many friends and family to thank for supporting me and encouraging me and helping me to get to this place. So thank you so much. The future. During my time at Lincoln University, I'm going to focus initially on a couple of areas. We're going to focus on retention and graduation of our students. And I say that because we have to do a better job. We owe it to our students. If we admit them, we should be in a position to graduate. They deserve that. And during that, we have to focus on the student experience. Students should have a great experience at Lincoln University. They should have a wonderful experience. I should never hear students say, I don't like Lincoln University or I hate Lincoln University. They should say, I love it so much, I don't even want to graduate, even though I have to. <laughs> Fundraising. I was waiting for one of the speakers earlier to say, at the end of their comments, and I'm going to write a check or leave a check. So that didn't happen. So I think the checks will be in the mail. But I will say, we need more resources. We need more resources. And we have to work to garner those resources as a team. Every faculty member, every staff member, every student, every alumnus, everyone associated with Lincoln has to help us to garner resources. And the reality, it will benefit some more than others. 
I would think that the faculty would want us to garner more resources so they could get raises. I would think the faculty would, the staff would definitely want to assist us in this process because they probably want raises too. And the thing that I would say is, if we want more resources for the faculty and staff, there's one thing that I know we can do that would change the landscape of this campus, and that's to retain more students. If we retained the number of students that we lost, our resources would be a little bit more abundant. And so there's a direct correlation between those who come in, those who stay, and those who leave. And every time a student leaves, they take the resources with them that can help this institution be better. So we have to do a better job of retaining our greatest resource, our students, who also come with resources. We can't forget that part. I'm going to focus on faculty and staff development. We have to invest in the people who are educating and training and guiding our students. That has to be a priority because, as was said earlier, but I would say another analogy, you can go to the well many times, but if no rain, no water, nothing goes to refill the well, eventually it will become dry. And dry wells don't provide for people. So we have to invest in the faculty and staff. We have to pour into them so that they can give to our students. And we want them to have a great attitude while they're giving to our students. Community building, the community of one, that's so important. There's only one community in Jefferson City. There's only one. And Lincoln is a great part of that community. It's not separate. We may be on the hill, but there are no boundaries that separates Lincoln from the rest of the community. And so I'm gonna do everything in my power to work with the community and Central Missouri to, to make Lincoln the institution of choice for the parents and the students in Mid-Missouri and in Jefferson City. And the only reason we want those students to leave this area is if they wanna get away from their parents. <laughs> But if they want a great education, we want them to choose Lincoln University. <laughs> fiscally sound. Lincoln has to be fiscally sound. And I'm going to do everything that it takes to balance the budget. And in balancing the budget, we're going to have to make some tough decisions. We're going to have to create some priorities. We can't spend on everything. We can't do everything. So we have to sharpen our focus and invest our resources into our priorities. And that's going to take collaborative efforts between the faculty, the staff, and the students to decide where we're going to go and how we're going to use the limited resources that we have. And the last thing that I'm going to say is fun. I don't want to be anywhere where I cannot have fun. Nowhere. So while we're dealing with all of the issues associated with higher education, we're not going to forget that life is short. So we have to enjoy it. We're going to have fun. We want to create an environment where people enjoy going to work, not dread going to, the, to work or to the office or to the classroom. We want students to enjoy being here because they have fun and you can learn and have fun at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive. We want alumni and friends to enjoy coming back to the campus. And we want the community to enjoy its relationship with Lincoln University. Dr. Nelm said everything, so I probably could have just stood up here and said, ditto. <laughs> but finally, I want to say that I'm going to leave with fairness, I'm going to lead fearlessly,
and I'll strive to fix the th those things that we can fix. But at the end of the day, actions speak louder than words. So I'm finished speaking in my brief time, but I know that God is not finished with me yet, and he's going to do mighty works and miracles at Lincoln University. And we've seen this over and over and over throughout the years. We didn't get to 150 years by happenstance. There have been miracles occurring at Lincoln University. Somebody's been praying for us. Our founders believed they had a vision of creating an institution that would educate African Americans. Today we know that Lincoln is situated where it can, it can educate students from any background. It doesn't matter their ethnicity, their cultural heritage, anything that they come with. Lincoln has to embrace every student equally. We may be an HBCU, but we're an institution, and that's a historically black college. That's why we were founded. But we are an institution that's for everyone. Everyone has to be included and engaged. So Lincoln speaks to a situation where an F situation can create A plus results, because that's what Lincoln has been doing for many years. So, God bless Lincoln University, these United States of America, each of you, and remember, the best is still yet to come. Thank you for being here. Good morning. I am Benicia Spencer Williams, Vice President for Advancement. It is my pleasure to introduce the delegates. As your name is called, please stand. Dr. Jan Wetzel, Provost, Lindenwood University. Dr. Robert Jennings, President. Lincoln University, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Dr. Michelle McClure, Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs, Harris Stowe State College <laughs> University. Dr. Maria DeStefano, Associate Provost and Graduate Dean, Truman State University. <laughs> Dr. Michael Westfield, Vice President of Graduate College, William Woods University. <laughs> Dr. Charles Ambrose, President, University of Central Missouri. <laughs> Dr. Don Watkins, alumna, Virginia Polytechnic Institute, and State University. <laughs> Dr. Roberta Broker, alumna, alumna, Southeast Missouri State University. <laughs> Dr. Brandon K. Dumas, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Southern University. Dr. K. Davis, sorry, Dr. Lowell K. Davis, Assistant Vice Chancellor for Student Success, Western Carolina University. <laughs> Dr. Dewan J. Warmack, Senior Vice President of Administration 
and Student Services, Bethune-Cookman University. <laughs> Dr. Bernice Duffy Johnson, Interim Provost, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, North Carolina Central University. <laughs> Dr. Larry Stanton Weiss, alumnus, Midwestern State University. <laughs> Mr. Randy Lechner, Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Fonce Vaughn University. <laughs> Dr. Brenda D. Bradford, Chair of the Business Division, Missouri Baptist University. <laughs> Dr. Donald M. Clayco, President, Lynn State Technical College. <laughs> Please be seated. Chief of Staff to the President. It is my pleasure to introduce the members of the Rome family. As your name is called, please stand. Ms. Stephanie Rome, wife of Dr. Kevin D. Rome, Sr. <laughs> Master Kevin D. Rome, Jr., son of Dr. Kevin Rome, Sr. Ms. Kendall A. Rome, daughter of Dr. Kevin D. Rome, Sr. <laughs> Ms. Barbara Porter, mother of Dr. Rome. <laughs> Ms. Fanny Boyd, grandmother of Dr. Rome. Mr. Willie Jenkins, grandfather of Dr. Rome. <laughs> Ms. Dora Robertson, aunt of Dr. Rome. <laughs> Mrs. Addie Baker, mother-in-law of Dr. Rome. and Mrs. Helen Baker, stepmother of Mrs. Stephanie Rome. Thank you, you may be seated. Good morning. I am Mrs. Teresa Ferguson, the Vice President for Student Affairs. It is my pleasure to introduce members of the Rome family as your name is called, please stand. Ms. Felipea Rome, sister of Dr. Rome. <laughs> Mr. Ivan Rome, brother of Dr. Rome, and his wife, Barbara, and their family. <laughs> Mrs. Alicia Brown, sister of Dr. Rome, and her husband, Wendell. Mr. Philip Rome III, brother of Dr. Rome, and his wife, Maria. <laughs> Mr. Scott Baker, brother of Mrs. Stephanie Rome. <laughs> Will all of the members of the, of the Rome family please stand? All other members that are present. Thank you, you may be seated. Will all friends of Dr. Rome please stand and be recognized.
That was the auditorium, right? <laughs> Thank you. I have a few announcements to share with you. The post inaugural reception will be held in Inman E. Page Library immediately following this ceremony. There will be an inaugural reception from 7 to 8 p.m., followed by the inaugural scholarship ball from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. at the Capitol Plaza Hotel. The Lincoln University Blue Tiger Battalion will now retire the colors. Choir will now lead us in our alma mater, Lincoln, O Lincoln, by Benjamin F. Allen.
by the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may he rest 